so our next uh, speaker is uh, Sharon O'Dell, and she's from Rask, Ottawa. And she's going to be speaking to us about the National Heritage of the Dominican Observatory and the Rask Preservation Committee. So we'll give it over to Sharon. Okay. So if everybody can see my slideshow and if they can hear me, I'll start. Uh, just wanted to um, introduce myself as Sharon Adele, as I've, I've already been introduced, but would like to say good afternoon. And um, I'm from the RASC Ottawa Center, as already introduced. And I will be presenting on the National Heritage of the Dominion Observatory and on the DO uh, Preservation Committee. You may see me looking to um, my side, and that's because I'm referring to notes. I um, have two screens going at the same time, so bear with me. Um, the Preservation Committee has been working um, on the, uh, you know, the Dominion Observatory, but we actually had to pause due to COVID-19, so I have information up until this past March. First, I will speak about the um, observatory uh, architecture and its heritage and the astronomers and the equipment that were once held within it uh, first, uh, because uh, some of you may have not heard um, my other uh, presentations that were in person at other um, past events for RASC GAs. And uh, this may give you some grounding as to what I will be discussing later. Um, with the, uh, the DO Preservation uh, Committee update. However, presently, um, I will touch first on as well the result from the DO Committee's work, which has been uh, getting some attention. The matter of preserving Canada's federal observatory um, was uh, placed in a newsletter that was published in Ottawa Heritage's quarterly this past March and uh, by the member of the Heritage Board of Directors, Robert Moreau. The latest news is helpful because it lets us know that attention is finally being given uh, to this matter and that has not had a spotlight on it um, this great before since the 1970s. Um, the article speaks of the concern that the Dominion Observatory um, is in and that it has mentioned the um, heritage um, Ottawa as championing the preservation of such buildings um, that are uh, of national significance in the area. It also indicates that uh, it has heard the voice from the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada calling for the further protection of the building in response to the possible impacts that may happen to this historic, historic site. Uh, the plans continue uh, for the building of a new hospital adjacent to it. And the article also highlights the history of the Dominion Observatory's uh, scientific purpose being integral to the architecture in addition to the present um, uh, designation of it being built by the Dominion architect David Ewart as um, an example of a Romanesque revival design. Uh, this is in agreement with the DO Preservation Committee who are working on further protection needed for it and its cultural landscape. At the moment, the buildings individually have protection, but not an overarching system to protect them as a whole together. Its cultural landscape is of national significance and they they definitely do interrelate as a whole. Moreau writes, the reasoning behind this is that the same uh, that Rask is voicing is the concern for the main federal government observatory, which was built between 1902 and 1904, facilitated the work of cartography in Canada. And it modeled itself after the Royal Greenwich Observatory in England that holds the prime meridian. In that reflection, in Canada choosing to assert itself through the science of astronomy, to break away from its British colonial past, it decided to create its own prime meridian in relation to the internationally known one in Greenwich. 
In doing this, it hoped to place Canadian science at the same level. And while it hoped to place Canadian science at that level, it also attempted to surpass it. And so you can see in the slide here that although the Canadian meridian marker has been placed below what was once the transit circle where it was kept inside the building, it was then later the archival library window. This meridian line is understood through adjacent buildings that also stand within the observatory campus, such as the example of the southern azimuth, which is beside that image. To understand the architecture, we return to the main building itself. Almost all of the buildings on the site were designed and built by architect Ewart, David Ewart, who was the Dominion architect at that time. He built the observatory in a revival style complementary to the other federal buildings in the nation, as such as the National Archives, the Canadian Mint, and the Victoria Memorial Museum. The Romanesque revival style was in its second phase in Canada, influenced by its American Chicago neighbor. And it kind of bridged the third and final stage as well. Ewart chose to use this with the observatory so that it would give an idea of serious importance, a, a visual signifier, as the past Romanesque style was used in Britain for buildings of importance back then, such as churches and law institutions. This is the same he wanted to place on the Canadian astronomy to show that even though the country was young at that time, it was actually quite serious about its science. One can also see the mix of revival decor of the observatory's architectural elements. In addition to the overall facade of the Romanesque revival style and a federal emblem above the main entrance. Not seen here in the slide is the surrounding landscape of the farmland. Many have asked why such a formal building would be placed in this environment. And this is where the political government history of Canada's investment in astronomy plays into the science behind it. Initially, sorry, initially, the location envisioned for the observatory was Parliament Hill, but there was no consensus on the choice and it was finally built on the experimental farm to avoid the many smoke chimney stacks that were with the heating of homes at that time. And also, of course, the growing city, which was creating more light pollution. However, the size of the building, especially the dome, would be dictated by the size of the scientific equipment, particularly the main 15 inch refractor Dominion telescope. This meant that the dome was to be built 30 feet in diameter exactly to fit this equipment. Therefore dictating the shape and the use of the structure below and at its sides. The size of the pier of the telescope would be exactly what was needed. The dome above the 30 feet and the building's use exactly for what the both the astronomers and the seismologists would follow in suit. So it was a design for purpose and not a building that was changed for any other reason. The choice of equipment was made to government through William Frederick King in about the mid late 19, 1890s. 1895 to 97, he headed the as he was the head of the astronomy program in Canada and his colleague Otto Julius Klotz, who would also become head astronomer after King in circa 1911-13, were visiting with government for the plans to build the observatory. There was also backing at that time from the Prime Minister, Sir Wilfrid Laurier, who saw Canada's potential in science as imperative to potential advancements of the nation on a world front. The Prime Minister also supported the cause by adding extra financial backing, and this allowed for the purchase of the largest refractor telescope at that time, being the Dominion Telescope, and most importantly, the approval was given to a secondary purchase of, a, of the largest solar telescope at that time. 
It was then brought to the observatory just before its opening in April of 1904, which would later be housed in the Kolyostat building. The same Kolyostat building does not exist anymore. It was at the back of the observatory, which was created to house the telescope in 1905. It was dismantled eventually in 1975, but we do still have some images, moving images. I'm not sure if it's working here, but if it is, that show how it moved as it slid open and closed in a barn-like feature to match the other buildings on the farm. Of course, the Koliostat and the uh, James Brashear mirror that was used, which is quite uh, famous, is still um, available as an object in the collection of the National Science and Technology Museum in Ottawa. After the building was dismantled, that's where it was placed. However, the, the, another project from 1911 and 17 was the building of a sister astrophysical Dominion Observatory in British Columbia in order to keep up with the changing technology of greater telescopic equipment and also to place its presence in Western Canada in order to receive astronomical reports back to its home base in Central East. The main objective in addition to cartography for the observatory was that of the time signal providing accurate time across the country for use of train travel and, of course, daily business. However, the Dominion Observatory place, was placed into the world spotlight for another discovery and that of Planet X in April of 1930. It was then that it was also became known as the first federal observatory to have a woman astronomer who was part of that discovery in Canada, and her name was Miriam Berland. The inclusion of women in astronomy aided by the employment of the National Observatory continued to, go, to not go unnoticed and place the observa this observatory into focus as Berland's career advanced. And, and especially because of the discovery that she had assisted in. Seen in this slide taken in June of 1938, Berland and Ruth Northcott from the Toronto RAS Centre can be seen in the centre, in which the Dominion Observatory in the background began to be used for GA meetings where astronomers from different countries could meet to learn about Canada's commitment to science and astronomy in addition to RASC meetings as a location site. After Berlin left the observatory to pursue, to, to pursue her retirement and to continue with studying astronomy, Mary Gray, Mary Gray became the head astronomer in the 1950s until the closure of the astronomy program in 1970, where she continued tours of the observatory to the public and educational events, describing the history of the astronomy in Canada over and over again, hoping that it would be heard and that others would remember where astronomy was in play in Canada's history. However, after Ms. Gray left the observatory to pursue her, her other career at the National Museum of Science and Technology, once the program in astronomy had closed in 1970, her concern for the building and its campus of outer buildings and the scientific equipment within led to a controversial removal of the main Dominion telescope. Seen here in the image, its removal occurred in 1974. This removal was led to its transfer to the National Museum of Science and Technology in the east end of the city. Unfortunately, through the telescopic equipment, continual removal, there had to be a different program put in place. Ms. Gray decided to create a new observatory in the front lawn area of the museum for display of the telescope, and they reconditioned it and gave it a paint of white, which had not been used before, to give it a new look 
and give it a new opening in its new space, apart from the observatory, the Dominion site. Unfortunately, though, the telescopic equipment continually removed to the museum from the observatory ended up with some RASC members, such as Arthur Covington, who has now passed on. But back in 1971, he continued to request that the telescopes be returned for fear that the building of the observatory campus then would be left empty of its original purpose of educating the public on Canadian astronomy within its culturally linked site. Although he was successful in installing historic plaques at the front of the building in honor of Sir Sanford Fleming and his measurement of time and train travel, and that of William King's heading of a strong astronomy program that began in Canada, in 1974, that is all that, that remained. The plaques were there to say what used to be there, but the equipment and the actual objects were displaced to a museum. To no avail, the equipment this day remains in the holdings of the National Science and Technology Museum. The Dominion Telescope, seen dismantled in this next slide here, was sitting at, in the museum storage in March of 2017. The decision was made to dismantle the museum observatory that Mary Gray had put in place in 1975 in 2016, and therefore it went ahead in 2017 because of the newly renovated version that occurred for the museum. The other goal was to amalgamate the storage of all of the scientific objects that were in the museum for Canadian heritage into one building. And in 2019, last year, uh, the new building opened in the front lawn area in front of the museum, now called the Canadian Conservation Center. But what now becomes of the Dominion Observatory today that was built in 1904 and is culturally linked to the national heritage as a purpose-built building to hold and operate science and to educate future generations on astronomy? The DEO Preservation Committee gave its last update to the Ottawa Centre at its last in-person meeting at the National Aviation Museum on Friday, March 6th. At that meeting, the following slides were shown. This slide shows a black and white aerial image taken in 1946 of the Dominion Observatory campus grounds. Some of the buildings are still standing, but some are not, as there was change and, of course, some loss, such as the Solar Telescope Kolystat building. Seen as a long building at the back, it is no longer there. Changes to the building shown also include building number seven, had approximate 20% removed in order to make space for the expansion of the Carling Avenue Road that lies behind the observatory campus. It helped define the meridian along with the South Azimuth building. Building number eight, North Azimuth building, was dismantled then as well. White, the white building attached to the south of the observatory, which I had named before, the solar heliograph or coleostat, was demolished in 1974, and the star-shaped garden top left was removed before 1960, part of the astronomer's house landscaping. Then there are other buildings on the campus that still remain, but need further overarching protection as part of the observatory campus site. For example, the chief astronomer's house, which was required for astronomers to then not leave their area of work, thus promoting more discoveries if need be. The data center, which to this day is still used and preserved as it used to hold all of the archival um, slides and astrophotography taken from the telescopes.
Then there's the transept observatory or photo equatorial observatory in the front of the main observatory that may be impacted by the encroachment of a new four-story hospital parkade. By such an encroachment of, of this, like, likely placed adjacent to it, it may happen if the budget is not there for underground parking. For the photo equatorial observatory, it has a, a history of its own. Linking back to the main building's function for Canadian astronomy, it is steeped in its own history of Canadian astronomers that entered that building as part of a teamwork for obtaining, obtaining measurements and keeping Canada's people on time. So what the, D, the, the DEO Preservation Committee is working on is an attempt to mitigate the impacts from the proposed development of the new Ottawa Hospital on the experimental farm grounds adjacent to it. This signage shows the designations that have already been placed on the buildings via number numeral order number one being the main building and reaching out to all the other buildings with numbers as they were accessioned into parks canada heritage however buildings such as the south azimuth are quite a concern for risk the dominion observatory buildings are protected as historical buildings based on the merit of the Dominion architect and his Romanesque revival style as an example of such in Canadian history. But their environs are not protected, such as the Azimuth building, which only is protected within the footprint of its building. The access roads that, requ that are required for the new hospital, such as a widening of roads for emergency vehicles, fire trucks, ambulances, may create a scenario of asking why the building should remain at all. An example of this has already happened with the dismantling of the North Azimuth during the 1960s when the widening of the main road of Carling Avenue went forward. This color aerial photograph of 1964-66 shows how the changes have happened to the buildings since the comparison of the 1946 one, which was shown earlier. Buildings eight and nine were removed during the 1970s, measured continental drift. Building number three is the heliographed, removed in the 1970s again, and building number six ha has been made shortened to make room for the Carling Avenue expansion. And that is on the map as well. Therefore, one needs to protect against the encroachment onto the Dominion Observatory grounds. This is to prevent the hospital buildings or parking structures from being built immediately in front of the observatory, which will obstruct sight lines to the sky if we may at some point exercise it as a museum. This includes tall buildings and parking light fixtures. We are looking at speaking to those who are planning the architecture of the hospital to see if there's a change in how we could make the light not impede on, on our sight line. The hospital site is and was zoned for 30 stories of height, and this is to be noted. So the encroachment of the traffic flows that may cut into close, they're of concern too, as, as was mentioned. The city zoning maps, one seen here, the first one in the Ottawa Citizen dated August 18th in 2016, show the National Capital Commission, also known as the NCC, that governs the experimental farm surrounding the observatory. 
they, that they have a proposal for the hospital boundaries to not align and the hospital seems to be using the NCC boundaries as shown in the new campus narrative December 2019, which I will show you next in the next few slides. The city zoning maps should be official boundaries, which are more favorable to the observatory, and this is what we are trying to work on. But we may, we may not be successful, but we will try. Here is a view of the observatory of how it looks now, looking north across the farm. This is where the parking parkades are supposed to be and other medical buildings. These are the maps from 2019 showing the mapping zones or the context from last year showing the changes ahead. The outline of the Dominion Observatory area is smaller than the official plans and the city zoning extends border towards Winding Way Road and connects to the agricultural buildings across from Maple Drive. Maple Drive being that street that you saw in the previous slide with the South Azimuth. The concerns about expansion of Maple Drive for the hospital access are a concern to that it will affect the South Azimuth building. In this slide is the proposed new hospital and what it may look like. The 30 stories or maybe a minimum of 24, but the maximum would be 30 at this point, and then there could be changes later. There is a concern that the proposed height will interfere with the observatory's view of the night sky. This slide here is an outline of the Dominion Observatory area again from a satellite view showing that the central experimental farm land and the parcel shown here does not match the zoning registered with the city, which was in the other maps that I was showing you. The outline matches the original proposal submitted to the NCC in 2016. And this is the one that some of us prefer. This is my last slide for today. And uh, if you have any interest in this project, because it is something that symbolizes how astronomy uh, was in Canada and the history of it, um, where it began, how the Dominion Observatory was there and then influenced the Astrophysical Observatory in British Columbia, um, you may reach out to any of us. Um, I can give my email address for anyone who is interested in helping out or has more questions um, later on. Thank you very much for your attention. Are we there? Yeah. We're good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Sharon Odell, for your uh, um, webinar on the, uh, the state of the national heritage of the Dominican Observatory is very interesting and also Canada's contribution to the Astronomical Society. Um, I'd actually like to really visit that building. It looks very interesting. Um, uh, so do we have any questions for? Don't see, no questions. Yet. No, okay. Uh, so nobody posted any questions. So um, I guess we'll just leave it at that then. Okay. Thank you very much. And Thank so you. I'd like to go and visit that observatory. So is it still open to the public for uh, just the buildings that are standing? What's left? Is it possible to just go and take a tour? Or is it just open to the public daily to just walk around? Or No, it's actually under the, the um, Energy Mines and Resources uh, oh, Forestry of Canada. And right now it houses um, staff from the um, Energy Efficiency uh, Department. I see. And um, so it's under them at the moment. Mm -hmm. But um, at some point in time, if there's a change at all, there isn't any right now. But with the hospital uh, being built nearby and the plans for that, we're trying to make sure that in the future, if there is a change of hands in the future, and that's not, you know, known at this moment, that there will be a way forward in the future to have it as possibly a, a museum. And if not that, at least still have it around so that one could go into it if, you know, by appointment. The that's issue, 
The issue of not being able to have the public go through in tours now is not just because it's in um, a federal um, uh, earth sciences uh, department, but also because of the um, observatory not having proper fire code. So when it was working as um, under the uh, earth sciences for astronomy and even seismology uh, until the 1980s, in 2001, when the staff from seismology were moved to the adjacent building number seven, which is the seismology building, the observatory then what did not have, nobody had access to touring through it for that reason. And so that's why it stands as close to the public. Um, and we would like to try and change that if there might be an amendment that could happen to allow the public in there again, because we've heard from a lot of the public, not just here, but from across Canada, that they would have an interest going in mm -hmm. um, because there used to be tours there and there's a lot of not just fond memories, but a lot of history that was told from that absolutely. area. Yeah, absolutely. And the telescopes that uh, the telescope that was taken from there is stored. Are there any plans to use that in the future or or? The whole idea of Mary Gray uh, creating another observatory was so that it would be continue to continue yes. to have education and to learn about the observatory, which could not be done inside the observatory itself anymore because of the uh, closure of the astronomy program there and the fact that they didn't allow the public in all at once right. because of um, obligations with safety. And uh, that was her way around it, even though it, it did upset many. Right. Um, because it left the, the observatory vulnerable, they thought. Um, like, what's the reason, you know, for keeping this expensive um, mm -hmm. building there? Because it does have architecture that has to be maintained. And it has had all of its um, wonderful stonework repointed um, in the last 10 years. And that was quite a cost. But it was worth it. Um, when uh, they did do it because at that point in time they decided that it was protected by heritage but that doesn't mean that the buildings that are all around it have that same protection right they have their individual protection that could be pulled apart if there was someone pressuring from the outside such as what we're seeing now right. to um, have that land right all right well very interesting and um, I, I um, I like when I see uh, women's contribution to astronomy highlighted and, uh, uh, um, you know, the more I study astronomy and the history of astronomy, it's act actually I'm amazed at how much women have contributed to, um, to uh, uh, um, you know, the field of astronomy. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for your talk.